Welcome back, everybody. They're one of the hottest trends in the food world, and I know you hear that all the time, but this is for real. Popping up all over Instagram and TikTok. Charcuterie boards are a great way to display and enjoy some delicious appetizers, but how do you know what to do? Like, how do you know how to create them? Joining us live with some charcuterie 101 is the executive chef from one of my favorite places, Red Rabbit, Travis Langley. Hello, my friend. Hi there. Thanks for having me. No, thanks for being here. And let me uh, start. Uh, I usually do this with celebrities, but you're a food celebrity. I will start with you. <laughs> uh, uh, Red Rabbit, even before it became popular, you guys have single handedly one of the best charcuterie boards in the city. Put a period, take the check to the bank. It's fantastic. So, first, congratulations on that. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate that. Now, but for people making it home, they're watching. Really, Travis, what is a charcuterie board? What, what should you have on a good one? So, a charcuterie board is just a variety of different cured meats, cheeses, and then some accoutrements to go along with that. Um, my goal is to always have a nice variety of flavors, textures, um, and when it's all said and done, I want it to look pretty cool. I was going to say, is there a trick to the, the, the placement? And you're going to walk us through it. Is there a trick to yeah. the placement of the items? Yeah, so I always start with my cheeses. And I try to, uh, you know, really spread those out first and then build around those. Because um, um, on our board, we use five different cheeses. Um, so um, spreading those out, working on color. Um, I like to kind of tear them and stack them, you know, because otherwise it's just a flat board. Um, with cheese on it. So um, this one I started out with some pecorino. Um, and then here we have a uh, blue cheese. So you notice I'm really trying to mix the colors and not put all the similar cheeses right next to each other. Um, and there again, we'll just kind of break them up, pile them up. Um, I'll serve it with a knife. That way people can, you know, cut it smaller if they want it. Um, so that's our Gorgonzola Dolce. Um, this is a Welsh cheddar, nice and sharp. Um, I, a little bit of aged flavor to it. Go ahead, Travis. Yeah, while you're while you're placing the cheese, let me ask you just a, to, uh, a, a general question because I think just like wine, I say this a lot. I think people are intimidated when they walk into a place to buy cheese, especially if they don't do this a lot. What is a go-to? You're the professional. What is a go-to mixture of cheese that anybody watching could do and not feel like oh, you know, goofy going in and asking for it? Yeah. So. A brie cheese. Um, I like a double creme or a triple creme, and that just is the the, the creamier the brie cheese, the more spreadable it is. Um, so bries are great. Um, it's always nice to have some kind of a blue cheese on there. Um, I like mm. the gorgonzola because it's really friendly. It's not too pungent um, or insulting to anybody from a flavor standpoint. Um, and then something something hard like uh, this is a manchego or a parmesan. Um, if you kind of get in those ranges and then mix in like a cheddar or a Havarti or something that everybody's familiar with. Um, and then I always like to have uh, a goat cheese on there. This is uh, just a creamy um, chevre. Um, this one I just made a little ball out of. It's really cool because I'll just kind of can make a little divot in there. And then we have a little bit of honey because the honey goes really nice with that sweetness. So, so, um, so you have the cheese. Those are your go-tos. So you have the, the cheese, and now to add a little texture, what else, what else should you add to a grade A board? Okay, so um, a few different salamis or cured meats. So prosciutto, um, prosciutto is really tender and buttery. Make sure it's sliced very thin. Okay. I recommend just buying it already sliced. Um, that's going to go really good with your saltier cheeses. So I'm going to put that mm. kind of right next to the manchego, um, along with the cheddar. It's going to go really well with those. Um, and I just fold it and stack it. Um, again, gives it a little bit of height. Um, and then I have just a basic Genoa salami. Okay. Um, this is kind of tangy, um, not real spicy. Um, so that's going to want to go with something that doesn't cover up the flavor too much. This uh, pecorino cheese over here is going to go great with that. Um, and notice I've just folded them different ways. Um, this one I can kind of stack up and almost make it look like a flower on this corner of the board. Um, real, it's just folded into little triangles like that. Um, and then this is a Toscana salami. This is a lot spicier. Okay. Um, this is going to go really well with um, the 
the goat cheese, something that can handle that flavor or the sharp cheddar as well. So and then, we're gonna work that one into this corner. And then we're taking some look, uh, look at some of yours that you've done at, at Red Rabbit. Nuts and chocolate, always a good addition. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. These are uh, candied walnuts. And those were just gonna kind of fit in. You know, I just say kind of get in where you fit in, you know, work those around <laughs> the place a little bit. <laughs> And then spreads. Um, what, what should we do for spreads, Travis? Yep. Um, so I like a whole grain mustard. Uh, mustards go really well with most of these cheeses and all of the salamis. Um, so you can always just kind of dollop a little mustard. Um, this is a sour cherry spread. That's going to go amazing with like a blue cheese or a brie cheese. So you're going to want to put that kind of close to that or even touching it a little bit. Um, that will really, uh, that'll tell people that, hey, those go together, you know, and that's a good goal. And bottom line, whether you, you just want to find a good balance, balance of the food and balance of the color. So, I mean, we eat with our eyes. So, you, you, right? Am I right on that as far as balance? 100%. 100%. Yeah. Just um, make it look fun, make it look colorful. And that way, when people come in, I mean, also encourage them to say, guys, eat it. The worst thing is, is you can make something really pretty and you <laughs> put a lot of work into it. People are like, well, I don't want to wreck it. It's like, I made it there. It's there for you to wreck. Yeah, that is, <laughs> I have no problem with that. And finally, we have just a few seconds. Where can people get a board at, Travis? I mean, because this is, it is the hot thing at every, well, we don't have parties anymore. But when we do have parties again, where can people find a board? And you can find them anywhere from Target, Home Goods. Um, there's your Williams Sonoma, tons of different home stores. And the good thing is, is we can all still go shopping. <laughs> yeah, totally. And, and today is the day that um, restaurants are reopening. Uh, are you guys reopening today, my friend? So we're actually reopening tomorrow. We're open Tuesday through Sunday. Um, uh, all of our, or both of our Red Rabbit locations, as well as our Red Cow locations, too. Perfect. Support local, everybody. Uh, they're, they're great homegrown restaurant group, Red Rabbit and Red Cow as well. Travis, thank you for being here. I appreciate it, Chef. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. As the chef said, all six locations of Red Rabbit and Red Cow uh, will be open. Well, Red Rabbit will be open tomorrow, but you can get takeout from both of them as well. Head to redrabbitmn.com for more information. They make takeout very easy. I might have had some on Friday, but you didn't hear that from me.